have you heard the term orchestration regarding the microservices what can be the orchestration in terms of microservices actually i read about it but then maybe i'm not a bit really uh, okay yeah. so orchestration is something like as a central system to control the various microservices to complete a task so basically just like an orchestra we have a central person who is controlling what type of music which instrument one is playing so one orchestra member is there just to orchestrate it so just like that in yeah. microservices we have a central system to control the calls between microservices yeah so in our application also we are doing same so there is one uh, central application its name is also orchestrator so it has a flow uh, for specific sequence of steps for particular flow so whenever we request any task so it collects the or, or reads the sequence of steps to be executed for particular task and calls the processor one after another can your microservice can share common database yes. so is it a good idea to share the database or not uh, yeah it's good as well as bad but it good because the services are part of single application so they need to access the data of each other service what type of memories are there what are the uses of these memory sections there are stack and heap memory what are the uses of these memory for stack uh, means when we are ha we have the number of uh, variables declared in the program so uh, it is taking uh, means uh, we can keep the reference of that variables uh, into the stack and from that it is pointing to the string constant pool and uh, heap memory so over there we have means this is not actual data in stack it is only the reference so from there uh, we can point to the uh, string constant pool and the heap memory and heap memory is actually uh, the store the data what are the new features you have used of java 8 so new features like stream api is the one and in executor framework itself we have used the which is come in java 8 only that new work steel thread pool that new method is like we have used uh, which is it's part of 1.8 itself so this is the one the second yes stream yeah we to for iteration to put in the condition filter out the things so, yes we have used uh, stream api and uh, lambda expressions of, of course that is again a part of it which we are most of the time we have used uh, beside that in data time also like yes we have used uh, to yeah in new feature of date and time that also we have used uh, mainly like in executor framework like as i told you like that new work steel thread pool is the api is introduced new so that and streams most of the time yeah. and what is the difference between string buffer and string builder string buffer uh, we can use in uh, collections actually uh, in terms of synchronization any difference is there okay so string buffer mm. and string builder both can store uh, the mutable kind of sequence string. of character which is string both can store mutable string objects the main okay. is, difference is string buffer is thread safe uh, that okay. string means, builder uh, is not, not thread safe thread safe means multiple thread can uh, hold the object uh, at the same time so how do you handle exception while using the spring or spring boot framework Yeah, when we using Spring Boot, uh, we'll uh, declare uh, at exception uh, handler. Handler with, with with the help of at exception handler, we can declare the class. With the help of annotation, we we can uh, we can have that class. With the with the help of global exception annotation, when the keyword we use the at exception handler, and we can uh, at uh, in the read the value keyword will give the exception class. And in Spring, see nothing but it's normal. Yes, wherever we will create a custom exception class, mm -hmm. uh, and we can call those object in every other class we use in the Spring framework. With the help of annotation, in mainly in the Spring Boot, with the help of annotation, we will have the uh, exception. Yes, in Spring Boot, we use the annotation. In uh, normal Spring framework, we used so normally we'll uh, declare a class and we can we can use that exception in every other methods in every classes. Okay, so do you have experience working with concurrency and multiple thread environment? But I uh, have heard about something called async uh, in uh, Spring. You have an uh, annotation called enable async. You must do in configuration. Add configuration. You write a async configuration class by having add configuration and then add enable async. Hmm. And then under the class, you write your uh, thread related uh, code. How much the max size for the thread pool? And then uh, once you define your uh, async uh, threading uh, configuration, hmm. you can use that in your methods or class by means of add async annotation by giving that that name, that bean name where you are, have that thread uh, 
configuration. So add testing of that P name. So that particular method or method or class will be called in the form of async. So it's actually that this async will return as a completable future. It return an object called like the completable future. And then when whenever the async is complete, you can call it as complete future. Basically, this async will return a object called completable future. So we, you you can just combine all these threadable async functions into one with the main with the help of join of this. I have heard about this, but I haven't used it. But this is the way where you can perform your async operations, parallel course. Yeah. Uh, can you just elaborate how you start your day, your organization? Uh, do you follow agile methodology or any other uh, methodology? No. We, okay. So because uh, because we have a small, we, the company is very small. You can say it's a startup. Uh, what we do basically, so we daily have two meetings. Yeah. Okay, so in the morning. So let's say the requirement basically comes to our business entity, and in the meeting, let's say the then <clears throat> he explain all the requirements, and then we have separate modules. Okay, let's say some let's say members are working on the order module, some is working on the contract module. So according to requirement, okay, according to the module on which the requirement comes, so then the let's say the work will be distributed, and after that we basically have to let's say make a design document on that. So let's say we have to design let's say the database part. Okay, so let's say what. So what is the table structure, and then basically we do a developers meeting. Okay, so then how can we start developing that? Let's say yeah, from that part we start the developing. So this is the process. How you are connecting your application to the database? Uh, what type of JPA you are using? We are using a uh, MySQL, uh, MySQL only. So through Hibernate. Uh, do you know uh, we are any any steps you have been seen in your application uh, which is written just to connect with the MySQL? that uh, jpa jpa will takes care uh, takes care of those things i think uh, hibernate will takes care of that one so we need to provide that uh, particular thing in the application dot properties that particular jdbc url and uh, jdbc uh, like a uh, username and password you need to provide yeah. in the application dot properties so that particular thing will takes uh, connection of that thing will takes place in the hibernate itself it will take uh, you have to uh, add some dependencies as well in your form dot xml in your application properties, you need to add some properties like username, password, and maybe dialect connector. Yes. These things you need to add for MySQL, and uh, automatically your Spring Boot application will check that there is some dependencies which are added for the database connection, so it will connect to the database. So uh, earlier yes. it used to be some uh, difficult, like it used to be not automatically, but earlier like uh, in JDBC. There, there are some certain steps you need to write, certain files, uh, connection files you need to create. It was not easy. Okay. And for each and every query, you need to create a, a statement object. Is it safe to iterate over a error list while removing its element at the same time? You will get a concurrency exception, I believe. There is one concurrent uh, access exception. So. Okay, so suppose you are getting uh, this error in your application which is application context is getting failed so what is the first mm -hmm. thing you will check in that application to make sure that what is what is the actual error uh, so, uh, so if context path is wrong there there might be a so first thing i would ask to check the url if it is correct if so it is correct then we'll go and check if there is a service is deployed with the same name then I'll check the service name which I have given at the time of calling. So is it the correct one? And if if, if everything is fine, if service is deployed correctly on the first, on uh, like if I'm using Eureka, if my service is properly attached and the service discovery name is correct and it is used in the correct manner, that's what few things I will check. Uh, in the spring, you have a Pingleton screen, you have a prototype. Okay. Mm. What can be the practical use of prototype beam? If we create okay, singleton is like only one instance getting created. Prototype yeah. is something like more than one instance. If we need, uh, like every time whenever we are making a hit or we are calling a method or we are creating a class, yeah. so in that case, we need a new instance. Yeah. So, in that case, we are creating a prototype. If I have an employee class. And then employee has got different values. Like suppose employee ID base and all those. So that needs to be created as an object. 
another object there is one more person whose value should be stored in this value like uh, in this particular different object so that needs to be created with employee and different object so in that case i think we require product this as different object and this is different object yeah 